guys, we got a ton of questions on the exhaust filter bypass kit. In this video, we're going to go over all the pros and cons, so check it out. Here's your OEM exhaust filter, and a lot of you are asking, why are we going to remove this exhaust filter? Reason being is this can potentially break off, end up in your water box, and clog your exhaust system. And they have a high failure rate unless you replace them quite regularly. So what's the benefit of the elimination? You don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about this breaking apart. You don't have to worry about the added expense of taking the exhaust manifold off and replacing this at every 20 to 25 hour interval. So we have our exhaust filter bypass kit, which comes with the gaskets, that you can install to replace this exhaust filter. So you ask, what are the pros? What are the cons? Well, we think Kawasaki designed this so that any moisture would condensate in this honeycomb feature here and would fall down back into the water box. So it would prevent moisture from going up the exhaust and touching the cylinder head and rusting the valves, etc. That's what this was really designed for. And unfortunately, they do have a high failure rate. So with the exhaust filter bypass kit, you're saying, hey, what's going to prevent all the moisture from going up the exhaust into the motor? Well, the only time that's going to happen is when the machine is sitting out of the water. So what we like to do is when we have this kit installed is you want to fire up the machine five or six times just to evacuate the exhaust of the moisture and all the salt content and whatnot. So if you do that, you'll never have a problem. In this video, we're going to give you proof and hands-on evidence as to why you don't need this exhaust filter and actually how safe this is. Can you tell which exhaust is from an 07 250 or a 310? So it's probably a little difficult for you guys to tell, but this is the 310 and this is the 250. And I'm gonna give you a little shot here. What really is the difference between the two? Can you really tell? Maybe the exhaust filter and maybe the 10 millimeter bolts on the rear besides the eight millimeter and no exhaust filter. So if Kawasaki is using the exact same exhaust manifold as the 07250, which still runs today, and they still do not have these problems. So why did Kawasaki change from this style to one with an exhaust filter? I'm gonna go over two reasons why. One, we're gonna start here, we're gonna end over there. So with the 250, they did have issues with moisture going up, rotting the valves, and valves getting stuck and dropping in the motor. So it was typically a combination of those who had water in the hull and would suck up water and actual condensation going up because people weren't flushing properly or blowing out the moisture, which if you own a 250 to 60, that's pretty much what you need to do. And you know this already. So that was the stepping stone for Kawasaki to make this exhaust filter. The big thing to take away from that is not only did they change the valves, the exhaust valves in the 310, and they are such high quality compared to the 250-260. Kawasaki used their knowledge of the 250s and 260s to develop the 300 and 310, as you see here. So they went with this exhaust filter for a reason, but in conjunction with this exhaust filter, they went with a super high quality exhaust valve that they did not use on the 250 and 260. And we're gonna go over that right now. We have three bins here. This bin, is the intake valves. Intake valves are the same for all machines all the way back to 12F. I'm sorry, I gave away information that nobody knows. Oops. They get beat up. You can see how pitted they are. They're destroyed. I mean, they, they get screwed up. They're very thin. Here's pitting on the, I don't know if you can see that there. It's pitting on the actual valve seat there, seating area. So they get destroyed, but that's usually from actually ingesting water and actually ingesting salty moisture or water in the hull. So that's a different ball game. So here we have our exhaust valves. And you're gonna say, all right, which exhaust valves are these? So one bucket is 250, 260 and all the naturally aspirated models. And the other bucket is 300, 310. And obviously there's more in one than the other. And that's for a reason. These valves, I'm not gonna tell you what they are yet, are such high quality that it's rare even in submerged jet skis submerged motors 
These valves are typically in usable condition. They're still able to be used. We cut them and they're ready to go. So these exhaust valves are cream of the crop. These exhaust valves, now I'll tell you, they're the 250, 260, and naturally aspirated. They're a different type of nickel alloy than these, and they actually have a problem where the stem actually corrodes here, which was happening in the older models and the 15Fs. The stem would corrode, the chrome would flake off the stem because they're chrome plated, and this would get hung up in the guide and it would drop a valve. So this was significantly more common in the older stuff. And I'm gonna tell you some secrets here, is if you take a magnet, the end here is magnetic, but the nickel alloy, which is a type of Inconel, but we can't say Inconel because it's proprietary, but that alloy, if you can see, it's non-magnetic. So what they do to make these valves is they weld together the nickel alloy and a hardened steel tip. But the problem with these valves is they put the weld right here. And the problem with that location is it sits in the chamber. Wherever the valve is, it pretty much comes up to like, say here. So the, the guide comes up to like here. So this area right here is exposed in the chamber and is subject to corrosion because it's steel and it's not nickel alloy. So this was a common issue on the 250s and 260s. So you can see firsthand, this was a big problem and this is what the moisture was doing. But they changed on the 300 and 310 to these premium valves. And you can see the price difference if you check online. These are like 70 bucks and these are like 115 bucks. This is a big difference and that's for a reason. An even higher quality nickel alloy, as you can see, steel stem but look where the separation is right here so here's where the guide pretty much ends like in this area here this is pretty much your movement but the guide pretty much ends right here and look what that separation is right there let me grab another one so these are not subject to the same circumstances that the 250 and 260 valves are and you can see it's got discoloration a lot of them like this one this detonation definitely little deposits could be salt deposits on here but these valves are still good and these are pretty much submerged vehicles this is that's what a submerged valve would look like and let's see here, here's a valve from a motor that was taken care of pretty clean so kawasaki went with a premium valve on the 300 and 310 instead of these and they move the weld up out of the chamber to prevent that from happening so the valve would not get hung up in the guide. That, in combination with the exhaust filter, really eliminated valves from dropping from that issue in the motor. Even so, without the exhaust filter, these valves are really, really high quality. So there's really no reason, unless you're submerging your engine, that you need the exhaust filter as well, instead of just blowing out the moisture after every ride. As long as you blow out the moisture after every ride, which just means firing it up and shutting it off like five or six times after you're done flushing, then you will never ever have an issue with moisture going up into the motor. So for quite a while, we've actually been making our own valves and they're actually based off what Kawasaki made for the machines, not really what the standard is in the industry, just because of how well we see that these hold up and obviously the intake don't hold up that well, but they only have that one flaw because of the corrosion. We based our valves off Kawasaki valves and used the same nickel alloy and chrome stem on everything, and they're all hardened and everything, so really, really sweet valves. Our intake valve, unlike Kawasaki, uses a stainless steel head on it and actually has a lot more margin so that it's stronger and more rigid. And when you actually do go in to repair your engine, you have a lot more meat to cut off the valve. Also, we got the chrome stem, we got the steel tip design, as you can see here. And here is where we put our partition right here, our weld. So it's high up on the stem. You don't have to deal with that corrosion and the chrome flaking off the stem. Second is our 250-260 valve which is actually based off the 300 and 310. So it is the higher quality nickel, as you see here. We have the hardened steel and chrome stem and the partition is all the way up here. So it will prevent any issues with corrosion and valves dropping from that. And your 300, 310, pretty much the same thing, has more margin 
because these things really need it. You can trim off if you want. You can see the nickel alloy and the partition is right here, chrome stem and steel. We went through a lot of work to design these valves and we designed them based off the best. Kawasaki does a damn good job. So a little bit off topic, but cool valves. Thought you guys would like seeing a little bit of the background behind why the exhaust filter bypass kit is safe to use. And I hope that this video sheds some light on some stuff that nobody really knows in the Kawasaki world and helps you make your decision if you want to run the exhaust filter or the exhaust filter bypass. If you guys are thinking about doing the exhaust filter bypass kit, I just want to give you some costs here on how expensive the stock exhaust filter is. Kawasaki released a technical service bulletin that states that you should replace the stock exhaust filter every 25 hours. If that's true, every 25 hours, you're going to be spending 203.26, not including shipping, and that's all aftermarket stuff. That's the exhaust filter and all the gaskets. If you decide to do the exhaust filter bypass kit, it's a one-time thing, and it's gonna cost you $89.99, not including shipping. Everything here at KP, is designed to be used in salt water. We are surrounded by the Atlantic Ocean. It's very salty, so everything gets destroyed. So everything we design, we make, is really geared towards salt water. In front of me here, I have our beautiful stainless steel hardware that goes in the exhaust here. This stock hardware, as you can see, corrodes very quickly, and it looks like this. Our hardware is pretty damn nice, and it's CNC machined at it. 316 stainless steel. It's beautiful. If you guys are going to do the exhaust filter bypass kit, it's probably a good idea to do our high strength boot as well. It actually is stronger than OEM. It does have additional ribs, so it is actually thicker. Also, the biggest benefit of this is it actually will handle higher temperatures. This will not have blowouts like the OEM ones could under high load and full throttle. So definitely a good cheap upgrade as well and the stainless steel hardware just looks awesome. Hope this video sheds some light for you guys on the difference in the valves, the exhaust manifolds, and why the exhaust filter bypass kit is safe to use. I, I know this was a lot of detailed information that really nobody knows. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Any comments or questions, please reach out to us. Visit kawiperformance.com, our brand new website. Catch you guys later.